This video is part of a series of videos that I've been making all in one day as I try to resolve an issue that I've been having with my Toyota Land Cruiser Bundera, which is running the 3.8 V6 Ecotec motor. Now, this video is going to all be all about the O2 sensors and how they've played their part in the issue and I've cut one apart and I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so that we can all go and wheel well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you reckon this content's worth a subscription. I reckon it is anyway. Hey, basically what was happening, I was developing a miss in my four-wheel drive. There were some other symptoms as well, and that was a little bit of blue smoke on the overrun or when I'd been idling at the traffic lights. So that was telling me a bit of a story. And if you'd like to find out about that, go and watch part one on this video, and I'll go into that a bit more in a bit more depth for you. In this one, I really do want to focus in on the O2 sensors and how they played their part, because essentially they were getting contaminated and dirty and were no longer sending the correct information out to the ECU. So the ECU couldn't do its job properly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset the camera, punch it right in here on the desk, and we're going to have a real close up look. So an O2 sensor, which is this device here, is used by the computer, the ECU in the car, to monitor how much oxygen is in the exhaust. And the reason it does that is it tells it then how much petrol it can put into the combustion chamber to uh, you know, make an explosion so the engine will run. So let's have a look at how one works. I've cut one of these apart. So this side was out of my left hand bank on the engine. Now if this isn't totally making sense, it's because this video is part of a complete series of videos and uh, you can go and watch part one, that'll give you a whole bunch of insight. But I do cover some of this information in part one, but we're going deeper here. So the left hand bank, this O2 sensor here, was generally seemed to be doing the right thing. The spark plugs look clean and so on. The one I've cut apart was definitely not doing the right thing. And uh, we were having rich running there. That was where the misfire was coming from. So the way an O2 sensor works is it, this is inside the exhaust pipe. It gets really hot. It only starts working when it's above 600 degrees Celsius. This, so this side is looking at the oxygen in the exhaust, but this side is also looking at oxygen, but it's looking at the atmospheric oxygen, i.e. how much oxygen is in the air around the sensor. And the way it does that is by, believe it or not, a minute amount of air that passes between these wires and that rubber grommet into this cavity in here. It's hard to imagine that that would be enough air for the sensor to work, but it is. And so the sensor is comparing those two um, zones of oxygen and it's sending a signal back to the ECU. And the signal is somewhat, um, it varies from 0.1 of a volt to 0.9 of a volt and it looks like a square waveform, sort of if I draw it, you know, it's sort of like this. And so it, it's low, it's high, it's low, it's high. And it's shuttling between those two and volts and it's telling the computer what's going on. So if it's got too much fuel, then it gets a higher voltage. If it's got not enough, it gets a lower voltage and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how the O2 compares the oxygen. And the way it does it is all of this stuff here. Now, as I understand it, the, the center section here has a mixture, well, it's mainly made of zirconium and it has a platinum on the, on, in the uh, platinum section in there as well. And that when those two um, react to heat, they end up creating that electrical voltage that we are looking for. Now, so th this section here is where the O2 sensor starts to fail. So this little tip here is what used to live on the end there. And you can see these flutes that allow the exhaust gas to get in there and react with the zirconian and, and platinum. All right, and then, um, then that sends our signal up through these wires here. Now, this is what we call a four wire 
O2 sensor. Okay, so there's four wires there. Now let's have a look at what those wires do. The first wire, which is this, uh, looks like it's the pink one in there. Yep, yeah, uh, sorry, white. It comes in here and it is this earth at the bottom there. So that, that's giving us a ground on the total unit. And then the other three wires, well, one of those wires is the wire that sends the signal back to the ECU with the voltage. The other two wires are used to provide a heating source. Remember I said it needs to be 600 degrees Celsius or higher? Well, we, to, to make sure that we get up to that temperature nice and quickly, we have a heater inside here. Now I'm presuming that it's between these one of this purple wire is one of those and then one of these two heats that center core and that creates the circuit, hence it heats up and therefore the unit, the O2 sensor can start to react nice and quickly. All right, now let's open this up a bit further. I wanted to do this on camera. So we're gonna, I'm, I wanna see what goes on inside here. Now I, don't, I presume I can cut it with a grinder. Let's find out. Wow. Wow, look at that. So there you go. So that that section there, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is the zirconian bit. And then down here, we've got all of this stuff here. So it doesn't want to come apart. I was hoping it might actually want to pull apart. But the, the comparison, this section here, will be capturing the exhaust temperature, uh, gases, O2, and this side out here is measuring the ambient air. Now, why has mine failed? Well, partly it's probably age. You know, it's just been in there for however long, I don't know. But look here, look at this brown stain. That's, to my eye, mud. How's that, eh? So, it's been, it's, you know, it's got dirty in there by, I guess, going up through these wires here. Um, you know, this is the inside sleeve that used to go up over there. And there, you know, when I wipe it, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but um, just that section there where I wiped it, it's a bit cleaner. So all of that is going to mean that this O2 sensor was giving us a misrepresentation and therefore I was having my miss. So it's worth actually changing these out on a, uh, on a regular basis. And what you're finding these days is that most modern cars actually have them as a service interval. So hopefully that's helpful in understanding how the O2 sensor works. Now I'm not an engineer that designs the thing, things, but that's how my understanding of these works. And I find that stuff absolutely fascinating. Now if if you've appreciated this video, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button. And if you've been one of those guys that's actually watched the whole compilation video from end to end, well, I'm going to go and take the Bandera for a drive now that it's all finished and uh, have a little bit of fun. So you want to watch some of that? Come on, let's go. It's always good when you get a big job like that done and you get a nice pleasing result. He's going great, which is the idea of it. So I guess I should go for a bit of a wheel. What do you reckon? Or a 1UZ. A nice V8 in the girl. It's been done before too. Hmm. Maybe I should do that. Nah, let's go wheeling. Enjoy the footage after this. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails. Oh, there goes his seal.